So, uh, mother sauces, there are five of them. Bechamel, Espanol, Espanol, Velute, uh, sauce tomate, which is going to be tomato sauce, and Hollandaise. All right. Five mother sauces are the basic five sauces that you need to know. And then all the other sauces come off of those five basic sauces. So any sauce you want to make, you start with these as your base, and then you add things to them, and they will make the uh, the sauce you're looking for. All right, that's why they're called the mother sauces, because they are all the base of, of all the sauces. So you got, again, tomato, bechamel, velouté, hollandaise, and espanol. All right, so bechamel. Known as the cream sauce, all right? It's a uh, white sauce. It's um, made with th by thickening uh, milk. Usually you saute onions, you add milk to that, and then you use a white roux to thicken it up and you add seasonings to that. This is the base for your classic um, macaroni and cheese, which I know we all love, um, but this is where it starts from. Start with this and then you add sauces based on, uh, uh, you, you change the uh, the texture of it, you add flavors, and you and you make derivatives of that sauce. But this is where macaroni and cheese comes from, all right? So bechamel, um, you add all kinds of stuff to it, and it changes it. You know, if you add, add heavy cream to it, you know, you add cheese, you make Mornay. Um, you add mustard, it makes a different flavor. Uh, you add cheddar cheese, or you add yellow cheese, then you get your, uh, your base for your uh, uh, macaroni and cheese, all right? Uh, velouté is a French word for velvety. Um, it's made with a light stock, so a, a stock that hasn't been, the bones haven't been roasted, the mirepoix hasn't been roasted, no tomato product has been added, it's just a white stock uh, thickened with a white roux. Now, we talked about the differences of roux, but you want to cook the roux enough to get the flour taste out, but that's just it. So you want to have a nice, light, pale roux. You do not want to have a dark roux at all. All right, so velouté, my favorite one with velouté is uh, Sauce Supreme. Uh, you add heavy cream to it and a little bit of lemon, a little bit of butter. Um, that's my favorite one. But you can see there's all different kinds of things. You add stuff to it. It um, changes the texture. It changes the flavor. Um, and they have a lot of different names to go with them. All right, you can have the the, the fancy name like Normandy or, or, or Barsi or just plain curry or Hungarian. Um, really kind of depends on the chef you're working with if they really know those names of those sauces or if they just simply say, hey, add X, Y, and Z to make a velouté and add this to it, all right? Espanol. Um, majority of the sauces that we're talking about are French sauces, uh, velouté. And Espanol is actually the uh, French word for Spanish. And so my guess is that uh, when the Spanish came to, uh, to France, they brought with them the process by making uh, brown sauce. Uh, brown sauce is nothing more than a brown stock thickened with the brown roux. By making the brown stock, we've gone through this before, what you do is you roast the vegetables, you roast the veg uh, the, uh, the bones, you uh, add tomato product to it, and you roast it some more, and you try to get that color, that fond from the bottom of the pan. That's going to give you a nice brown color. It's going to give you a more hearty sauce. All right. So the reason that this is a, that this is a great sauce to, uh, to saute with is because it is so hearty. Uh, so you can make it a Bordelais sauce by adding some uh, reduced red wine, or you can make it a Madeira sauce uh, by adding uh, reduced Madeira wine, or a Marcella sauce, same thing. Um, port wine, it stands up really well to it. It's really thick and it's hearty and it's got a good flavor and it's robust. Um, and you can make really good pungent dishes with the, uh, with the brown sauce, all right? Um, Hollandaise, all right? Hollandaise, French word for Dutch. Obviously, the Dutch brought this to them. It's an emulsification, which we just talked about, uh, sal the Caesar salad dressing. And it's an emulsification that's made with clarified butter, egg yolks, a little bit of water, um, a little bit of lemon juice, and you have to whisk it. If you watch the video, you'll see how you have to whisk it really briskly uh, at a over a low temperature because if you go too high, you'll scramble your eggs. Um, we talked about emulsifying, so essentially what you're doing is you're making an emulsification between the, um, the butter, the clarified butter, and the egg yolks. And um, there's water in there as well, so you have to have the uh, egg yolks as the emulsifier or it'll separate. Uh, clarified butter, if you look at the inside of this pan, you can see the butter solids are down there. We talk about this again, too, when, when you watch that video about emulsifier, emulsifiers. Butter is an emulsified substance. It has milk, it has water, 
and it has oil and they're all mixed together. When you melt it down, it will separate and you can see the butter solids are here and they're pouring off just the oil part of it. Um, when you have lobster, you're essentially having drawn butter, same thing, clarified butter, drawn butter. Um, watch the video and you'll see how you mix these two together and it makes into the sauce. Crucial thing is that it is an egg sauce and you're barely cooking those egg yolks. So you have to make sure you hold it for no longer than 20 minutes. Uh, one restaurant that I was at, it was a policy every 20 minutes we made fresh hollandaise. Or <clears throat> another restaurant that I worked at never made hollandaise unless it was ordered. So if somebody ordered hollandaise uh, or bernays to go on their, um, on their asparagus or on their steak, you would make it to order in small batches. All right. Um, so derivatives of the hollandaise, a uh, big one that you're going to hear is Bernays. And that's just adding um, tarragon and vinegar and peppercorns to a hollandaise sauce. All right. Sauce Chiron is uh, tarragon and tomato. Uh, Maltese is a, a rind of a, of a blood orange. Um, and these are all sauces that are derivative of the hollandaise. All right. Uh, and then the last but not least is a tomato sauce. Um I'm sure you're all familiar with with, uh, with the basic tomato sauce. It's onions and uh, celery, sometimes carrots. Uh, a majority of the, the, the whole sock is made with uh, uh, tomato and thickened with tomato. Um, some people, a lot of people, will not make a tomato sauce unless they have meat in it. A lot of people have pork, and they also have veal, and they also have beef in there, and they simmer for a long period of time. Um, so one of the variations of that is going to be a marinara, which is just straight vegetables, no meat whatsoever. Another one that I like to make a lot is a uh, puntanesca, and that is uh, an Italian thing. Um, the story goes that uh, the gentleman was trying to feed people, didn't have any food, so he went from door to door to door and kind of got ingredients from each person. Tomatoes was one of the biggest ones that he got. So the puntanesca has got a bunch of different ingredients inside of it. Start with the tomato sauce and then you add a bunch of things after the fact. And then of course there's a bolognese, which is, uh, um, like I said before, when you make your tomato sauce, um, a lot of people will, will add uh, meat when they're making the sauce. Um, a lot of people won't. And then if you take meat and you add it to the end, let's say you have Italian sausage and you cook it off and grind it up and put it inside of there, that becomes a bolognese sauce. So it is a uh, tomato sauce that has meat product added to it, okay? So the master of the mother sauces is very important. Once you know how to make these five sauces, then um, you understand the basics and then you can kind of play from there. Add whatever you want to add, experiment, add some things. And if it doesn't work out great, throw it away and start over again. Add some things and maybe you'll stumble across something that's really good. All right, so that concludes the mother sauce lesson. I hope you enjoyed it.